Hi everyone, um, uh, this time I'm going to talk about chart calculator and other charts. I'm going to show you that how we can create a slope chart that help you to create KPIs. So for example, uh, I will show you the process of creating the chart and that you can have a couple of uh, KPIs to see that, for example, you have a group of uh, 10 or less than 10 items and you want to see that in the old scale and new scale how's the change happen so to start you need to go to the website charticulator.com and um, so you're just going there uh, before that I should mention there is a gallery here that you can uh, kind of get some ideas so for example for that Per, for that chart, actually, I'm look at this, and there's a small video here. It's just two minutes. It's not that much. It doesn't have any description. But still, if you want to explore yourself, should be a good start. But still, there's a problem that there is not a deep uh, documentation on that. So I'm going to actually explain that how's the process and what's my experience to working that one. So uh, I'm going to the chart calculator. So I'm click on the new. Uh, I have a data set about a student's grade that I'm going to use it here. So as you see, it's a student name, their score in 2014, their score in 2015, and the status that is increase or decrease. So I import. There's the important thing that the data that you're using here should be CSV file. So if I start to bring the data that is Excel file, it doesn't accept. So here, if you look at here, I have another one uh, when I import it you see that it doesn't accept and I couldn't remove it so I need to click again and bring the CSV file here so this is a one notation so we get the same chart uh, we need some data symbol so I put the symbol here for the each data point because I want to show the data point in the second step uh, as you see under the chart segment we have a plot segment one and as you see that the shape is has the x axis and the y axis the chart that i'm going to create doesn't have x and y it has two y axis so i'm going to remove this one i'm click the on this eraser to remove it and i'm back to the plug segment at the top and i choose the line one so i put a line for here and i put another line for this side and you can see now the data point has been distributed on both of them so uh, for the plug segment one i want to show the data based on the actually uh, based on the score one so i drag it and drop it to here just make sure it's become orange that means that is going to accept it for the 2015 the same so just make sure when you drag and drop it's become orange so I just put it here so you see the data point here moreover uh, if you look at the data set click on this three dot you will see that we have something like uh, status that is increase or decrease for the each data point so I want also to have something for them so what I'm going to do I'm click on symbols and for the symbols for the uh, color fill I want to put the status so I just put a status you see that I can see some color but the color is not really good so I'm going to kind of change the color when it's going to increase, I use the Power BI one because I want to load it to the Power BI. So I use the uh, green of Power BI and also the same for decrease. I use the Power BI one and I want to show this color. So this is the one that I have and then you can see that each data point has decreased or increased. You also now the only thing is to create the link. So I want to create a link between these data so I click on the link. There is a plug segment, plug segment one and two. I want to create a link between them. So you see that is actually create a link for me. And also I'm able to mention that uh, the link can be changed the line. So it just become the yellow one and the other. So it's actually, this is a kind of the, uh, you can also add it as a legend so decreasing or increasing to provide some information 
Uh, as you see that whenever whenever I put something here, I get some uh, actually some attribute here. So for the legend, also I'm able to specify which location I want to put. And yeah, another problem that this has is actually you see that it's the students become 45 and 62 so sometimes you are happy with that so let me bring it a bit closer so you can see the chart so you see that sometimes you are happy about these differences but actually you want sometimes to have a same scale so you need to back to the plot segment one and change it for example from you said that the grade of a student is something between 0 to 100 and also the same for the final one, you want to set this is something between 0 to 100. So it depends on you that how you want to show the data. So you can set this can be adjustable or you can set actually you want to say. So this is for the um, scenario that you just want to have. You know the minimum and maximum of your data and you want to actually adjust it based on that but sometimes you just don't need that so you don't need to do it so just let it it automatically detect that the other thing that i'm going to add is the name of the student so we already put the scale you see the increase and decrease but we never put the student name so this student name can be group name or any other thing just mention just be careful that if we have lots of data point here so here is one two three four five six if we have more than uh, i think so more than 10 it should be really messy so i never use this chart uh, to show the kpi that is increase and decrease decrease for more than that number so what i'm going to do actually so i'm going to put a, a po another point for the text here so it's a text data, uh, as you see, it comes under the glyph. So we have symbol and text. And for that one, I want to show the student name. So to make it a bit cleaner, I can put the student's name on the other side. And also I can mention there should be in the middle. So I can see that who is Nick. Nick, as you see, that uh, is increasing. Leo is increasing. John increasing. Jane increasing. Pam decrease and some also they decrease their mark. Other things that I'm more interested to have some name for here. So I can put a scale here and said that I want to have something like this here. I just make it a bit up. It's just a bit sometimes a bit funny, but yeah. So I just put a name. So I said old scale. And to accept it, just need to click here and do the same for this part. And I can set, I want to have something here and I change the name, new scale. Okay, so just move it a bit up and maybe I can change the legend. So I just did the kind of the legend to kind of be uh the other side so something like this or yep something like this so it's kind of the created and also you can change that one to a slope chart i call it as a kpi and i change the chart name so i think it should be okay so you for the fair uh actually after a while you want to back and uh, change it you can change the name slope chart kpi group something like this so it will be saved in your chart equalizer and now i want to export it to power bi so i'm just click on that going to the power bi custom visual these are the actually these are the fields that actually i use so i change them group name score old score new status uh i don't want to auto select based on the data because i know the range of the data so i just remove it but if you want to keep the original one you shouldn't remove that and then i want to see the tooltip i put a name slope chart version one for example if you're interested you can put your email and the address if you want to share it with others and 
Creator, Power BI Custom, Visual. So I click on that, back here to my Charticulator version. I put it here. Now I have some others, just let me remove them. So I'm going to add from file. Uh, the one that I have was this one. It's already imported here. I click on that and just make it a bit bigger. Click here. So you see that these are the things that I have. So for student name and for gran gran granularity, sorry about my pronunciation. So actually you need to provide the data that is actually shows the level of detail here because I don't have any other data, maybe having the uh, primary key should be better, but I use this one. The student name, the status, the score for the old and the new, just that. And you can see that one here. So you see that actually I made a mistake here. So I need to back and create that one again. So this is the actually the location of that one can be a bit sometimes a bit uh, different. Uh, so you can change it. So you just make sure this one is a bit tricky. Uh, you need to make sure to create one. So I can, for example, easily remove them and uh, you can kind of publish it and see that. So still some things uh, actually, uh, you uh, still I'm uh, kind of investigating that one. So for example, this time I want to say I don't want that and I want to auto scale. That means that just ignore the what that I said between zero to 100. So to become very fast, I just said V1, don't change the other and uh, just save it again. So we have the another version. So now uh, I can easily uh, kind of bring the other one here and you will see that the scale can be changed. So this one, the my visual, this one, this has been there. So just click on that and uh, provide the all other information that I have, status, old, and the new one. So this one is actually uh, become a bit different through this. So you can see it actually doesn't include this zero one. Also for both of them, you can see the tooltip available here. So uh, you can you can change it. Yeah, I'm saying that it's possible to all of the change it. But whenever you change it, you need to kind of again back here and publish it here. Uh, there should be some way to make them really kind of the better so don't happen like this is possible but uh, uh, there are is a bit uh, kind of sometimes a bit tricky to work with that so you should be careful exactly what location you drop your takes and other information so this is another my investigation on charter collector uh, because I'm already create this chart using the R code. So uh, if you look at the previous my chart, uh, this one. So uh, I actually create this one using R script. So kind of uh, this is the code that I'm using to create the R scripts there. So this is also possible, but this is kind of without writing the code. So the one that you see here I'm using, I didn't write any code, but, and you can change it. So uh, still I'm saying that I'm not really uh, just trying to see that how it's work. And I will update you as much as information I get here. So, which is really good. So in this one, the one that I'm created uh, using the R code here, uh, I didn't have the, uh, because I use the R icon here. Uh, this one, I don't have the tooltip for that here. I have tooltip and also, uh, also uh, I can, oops, I can put a, let me remove this one to, or yep, just remove this one. And if I put a slicer over there, so this is a slicer. For example, I just want to see the status decrease or increase. You can kind of see them or just increase or you can actually you can also this has the possibility to uh, slice and dice the other chart so it's kind of impact on the other one so for example if i change it to something like this 
status and the student name the value the student name so i can kind of easily slice and dice so this is a really good point of that uh, we don't have that one with power bi uh, with using the r in power bi uh, but uh, this chart calculator has and you see that there is no code environment thanks so much for watching this video uh, in other video regarding chart calculator i put more information and i put more information about my investigation through that and i hope that you enjoy it thanks so much